in this game, do you reckon, in the squad, Tad? I reckon there's probably uh, three or four. Yeah. yeah, I think there's a couple of bowling positions up for grabs. Um, probably a couple of batting positions. There'll be a lot of discussion about whether we have um, an extra spinner. There'll be another a lot of discussion about whether we have the an extra wicket keeper. Um, so it won't necessarily just be a straight. It won't be a straight shootout. But there'll certainly be good opportunities for guys to. That, that won't hurt them to do well. That's for sure. How much flexibility have you got, Justin, on you know, 16 or 17 or whatever? The yeah, I think we've got a. I've got no doubt we have the flexibility we need. I've you know, had a good discussion with Belinda this morning, and <coughs> as long as we get the squad right, we've got a. You know, as silly as it sounds, we've got five tests to play. Then we've got a um, game in Worcester two days after the first test match. Uh, so we'll, we'll have the flexibility required. So that means that you'll make that call on the squad. And so a lot of boats will just pack their bags and go back to Australia. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be brutal actually. Yeah. I don't know. I use that word leading up to the World Cup as well. But we're going to have to find the best way, and we're still searching for the best way at the back end of the game. It's, it's really important. We talk to guys face to face, and we talk to guys individually. It's about, about respect, and it's about good communication. We can't just talk about communication and not actually put it into practice. But then, actually, how we do it. Because um, there's going to be some disappointed guys, there's going to be some really jubilant guys being on their first or another Ashes Test Series. So we're just working out the best way to do that, but um, we'll speak to everyone face to face. Do you ever consider doing that footy style, like everyone's in the room and who's yeah, in, we thought who's about in the it. 22? Yeah, that, and that, that'd be the yeah. easiest way to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, I think one thing I learned as a past player, and I've certainly learned as a coach, is you've got to show everyone the respect they deserve. You know, There will be some disappointing guys, no doubt about that. Um, but if we can be honest and we can be transparent with them, why they have or haven't been selected, then that's the fairest way to go. Is it worrying sign that Usman's not playing or not down to play this game in yeah, terms of the first a test. Bit of a least. race race against time for this game. He's probably he's really close. I mean, you've seen him running. He's starting to hit again. Uh, but with his style of hammy, you just want to make sure it's right because you don't want to, him to be pushing it too too soon and then have him out affected for the rest of the series. So uh, we'll, we'll wait and see what happens with this game, but then certainly we'll have to wait and see what happens with the first test match. You know, fingers crossed he'll be OK. He's an experienced player, which is in his favour, and he's played, he's been playing now for, albeit white ball cricket, he played all of the World Cup. He's been playing pretty well, so um, that experience will be in his favour. Does the introduction of the concussion subs make you change the way you think about putting the squad together? Are uh, you talking about anything specific? Well, just so you can have cover for every possible scenario. I, I guess in, we've had the experience of the last few years in Shield cricket of having it, and I think it's a really good common sense approach. I'm glad it's come in. That it is, you know, it's literally a grey area in a lot of ways, and I've been through the the full spectrum of emotions on it, having been a person who was concussed or hit a lot through to a coach and then seeing the, how it can affect games of cricket. So I'm glad this common sense has prevailed and uh, I think it's a good ruling and well, time will tell. Well, I don't think it affects our squad though. I mean, you, you can't really plan you, or you shouldn't select teams or plan for, for injuries. If you do, it's just another form of injury. If you do, it's just another part of the complexity of selection. It will disadvantage touring sides though, won't it? Because you know, the local team will have all manner of cricketers on hand to choose from. Yeah. You don't necessarily have another wrist spinner up your sleeve in a small squad, do you? Yeah, well, that's, that's yeah. the truth. Yeah. That, 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 that's right. I mean, like and that, that. that might be... Yeah, I mean, that's something... Now you've just asked me the question, it's something I have to think more about. Um, but yeah. what, what we are lucky in these touring sides, we've got 16 or 17, you're usually covering most bases. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. I suppose it does does change things a bit. One other factor, Justin, is that there's a few of these guys that are in the 25 who've got obviously county deals, whether it's White Bull, Red Bull, where they can be in the UK yeah. until certainly with the blast until the end of September. Oh, sorry, the end of August. How much of a factor does that play in terms of like you know if it's you know a 50-50 call between two guys? Yeah. Well, ultimately, you, you pick. You've got to pick the best Ashes squad, and I know that every player would wants to be in the Ashes squad if they then. The softer landing, I guess, and, and or the fortunate landing is they've got a county deal, then that's great. It's great for them. They're playing cricket in England, and it also gives us the advantage if something does happen, and at least they're in the country. So, I mean, this is unprecedented to have 25. 
players here, plus a few more who are who aren't in this game. Ashton Agar, Glenn Maxwell. There's a lot of good players who are in the country, and it'll be the same when we cut it from 25 to 16 or 17. Then we still have some some of the guys still here, um, I assume. So that's a, that's a really positive thing for us. You tried to have an all-rounder in the eviction in the squad, Justin. Did you, can you get around without having an all-rounder? Oh, it'll be one of the discussion points. Yeah. Um, uh, all the whether it's Mitch or Manus, for example, who, who's the talk a bit about his leg spin. He's bowled, I think he's bowled 180 overs in county cricket this year, which is a, you know, you can't you can bowl in the nets as much as you want, but him to bowl 180 overs, that's great for his development, and he's playing so well. He's got 500. So um, whoever it is, whoever the all rounders are, they they'll get picked not just because they're an all rounder, but because um, we feel they're going to play an important role in the series, or at least be important back up in the series. I keep hearing reports about Wadey's form. Yeah. What are, what are you seeing? I haven't seen him. Before. Oh yeah. Well, I, I'm hearing the same. I, I've obviously we saw it during the summer, um, and we thought you know a real reward for has been picked in the Australian A side because um, there's a lot of talk about Wadey and his form and where he's batting and wicket keeping, uh, and he's done it. He just keeps doing. He got he's got 300s on this tour already. I think he's batted six or seven times. He's got 300s. Um, He's doing everything that we've asked of Australian cricketers. He's he's making runs. He's making runs. He's making big runs. He's knocking that hard. He's got that look in his eye. And uh, coming into a tough series like this, you'd like to see those those sort of fighting sort of instincts. So he's uh, certainly banging very hard for selection. Tradition's always been that if you like, made 100 in the preceding test, that you you almost sort of guaranteed it. But does with the fact that you've got these two guys coming back in? Alter those protocols completely? Oh uh, yeah, there's been there's been some unfortunate instances in the past. I think Martin Love did he get 100 in his last Test match, or there's a couple that it's been the case. Um, it's oh, yeah, well, that's a miracle. That's in the Bible. That should be in the Bible. Um, uh, but yeah, I, look, it does, and, and it's a bit the same when Pete Hanscom, for example, missed out on the World Cup squad, he was replaced by Steve Smith. So it was really tough on him. He'd done a great job. And who knows if the, the cards might fall that way. That I, mean, I think Paddo, um, who else? Burnsy and Travis all got hundreds in the last test match. Um, we're, we're six months on from that. There's been big changes to the team with Steve and Dave coming back in. Um, you know, if that's the case, there'll be some. It'll be really stiff, won't it? But it's the business. Where what I'm really pleased about, like Matthew Wade, is that we've got the, the competition's building. It's getting stronger. We've always prided ourselves out on Australian cricket, and let's just hope that keeps happening. Um, if if someone was to miss out on scoring a Test hundred, it's not a bad thing to have someone just outside who's already scored a Test hundred. So it'll be a tough call, but we'll just see how that falls in the next few days. So. When you address the group ahead of this game, what's the, what's the one message you're delivering to them? Oh, we just we had a good chat the other night before. We had a bit of fun with selection of a draft. I don't even understand this draft stuff much, but if you're the guys who follow American sport, it was good fun. Um, but I guess two two objectives of this game. One is so we're really hard and battle hardened and played intense competition before the first test. We're going to need that. There's no point going in just playing some Mickey Mouse cricket. Um, so we'll, they'll go in a bit battle hardened, all, all of them. And two, it's about opportunity. You know, there's a cover, as we said, Peter asked at the start, be some opportunities. There's some place up for grabs. We'll see how guys react under the pressure of, of playing for these spots, playing against, you know, the best domestic competition they can they can be up against. Um, so that's what the objective of this game's about. And what's it like having Steve War around the camp? Oh, it's brilliant. It's like, Having Ricky Ponting. I, in my office back in Perth, I used to have, I never went to Harvard, but I employ a lot of people who did. And if you can employ better people than you are, Ricky Ponting, Steve Waugh, um, we've had Maddie Hayden, we've had Mitchell Johnson during, <laughs> with us during, you have great people around your squad. You're creating an environment where these guys can learn, um, get better. You know, he just brings, you know, straight away, as soon as he speaks, everyone, the whole room goes quiet. You know, he talks, with great intelligence and experience. <clears throat> He's been there before. Um, so I'm very lucky personally, but the whole squad, these young guys, they, they don't realise what a great mentor and teacher they've got with us. Are you sensing any similarities between 2005 and now? The 2005 series, the whole country sort of got whipped up to this bit of a patriotic fervour by the end. Didn't it? Mm. Do you think the World Cup might have a 
give it a similar feel this time round. Hopefully, a different ending. Yeah, possibly. Uh, the, the thing that worried me most in 2005 was the momentum England had built up because they'd been playing great cricket <clears throat> and they'd been playing great Test match cricket, and that made me nervous about the World Cup. That's why I kept saying England were favourite for the World Cup because <coughs> their build up and their their winning momentum was, was better than anyone. So. Um, in Test cricket, it might be a bit different. They have a few different players in there. Um, there's certainly you, you never whether you go back in the in past series, we might be beating in England either. But you never question the passion of the Barmy Army or English cricket. So um, yeah, I'm sure they'll be very excited about the World Cup. They might take a bit of momentum, but we're going to be ready for that. And yeah, we had a good World Cup as well. So we're, we'll take some confidence out of the World Cup. Besides that last last game, obviously. Um, but whether it affects the Ashes, time will tell. Justin, um, you've linked back up with Tim Payne here, obviously, for, for Test captaincy. Um, how have you, I guess, assessed the way that he's taken the, the role on in the, in the circumstances that he's had it, and I guess how you've built your relationship together? Yeah, yeah. did you write that article on him this morning? Or, oh, yeah, yeah, really good. Um, when we, um, when, you know, we talk about the toughest pretty boy I've met, uh, you know, I mean, he's got the, fa the fancy hair, he walks around, he's got the rig out, and. But he's a, he's very impressive. You know, he's physically tough um, to to help guide the, the boys through the last 12 months. To help come back from almost not playing cricket to be now Test captain it says a lot about his character. I, I get on that well with him. We had a great relationship. So I've always said, felt that the the relationship now between the captain and coach is crucial, and we're lucky to have a great relationship. He's very impressive, um, and I know how focused and committed he is to this series, so that, that I'm happy about that. Was it good that he just had that Ashes focus, I suppose, while you did have to look at the World Cup, where you know you, you get to talk to him where he's been thinking about that and preparing, I guess, specifically for that for a while? Yeah, we did it, not only with Paney, but Graham Hick was here with the Australian A, and he did some great stuff leading up to the World, uh, to the Ashes with um, you know some of the data we were looking for, some of the matchups we were looking for. He, they all did a good job. We had a, a great team back in Brisbane who have helped us um, feel like we're really ready for this Ashes campaign. So to have those guys focus solely on Red Bull cricket and the Ashes cricket, and, and I, my gut feeling is that'll be the, the way forward for us. Um, there's so much cricket now. There's some T20 World Cups coming up. There's the, the new uh, cycle of World Cup in one day cricket. We've got the Ashes, we've got Test cricket. We're trying to become, sorry, we're trying to get better and better in. Um, so I think that'll be the way forward. But the Tim Payne and Graham Hick and the, these guys have done a brilliant job getting us ready for this series. You've done a few of these trips. Is this the kind of perfect preparation, like a, a highly competitive game that you could control every element of? I, I think so. Yeah, now, that's what we did. I, I, again. Um, you know, great respect to Pat Howard before us that, that this was we talked about it and they've made it they've made it happen so um, it was a good vision back then again time will tell but I can't think of a better preparation we've got great facilities we've got 25 of the best cricketers in Australia here they're going to go head to head they'll play tough cricket um, we've just had a World Cup so they're pretty a lot of them there's six or seven pretty battle hardened already they've had some Australia A cricket um, hopefully this is as good a preparation as we can get